I'm Michael Freudenberg. This is Film Masters. On this episode, episode number 24, we are finishing the apprehension engine. We'll be installing all the strings, so the three strings, as well as the two for the hurdy-gurdy wheel. Uh, we'll also be putting the ruler support in, and we'll be also putting a support bracket up the very top for our noise makers. Now, from the previous tutorial, one thing I didn't show was make sure that you put two screws in on your reverb tank. There is holes up the top, so obviously make sure that you do that. So for the three strings, I'm going to choose either violin or electric. Uh, guitar strings, and we need to have cello strings, and they're used for the hurdy-gurdy wheel. Now let's start by creating our ruler support. It goes right at the front. Now one item you can use, you can use a wooden ruler if you wanted to and convert that into that support holder. However, I'm going to use a piece of plywood. Um, it's two pieces of plywood that I've glued together, very similar to the support that was on the uh, hurdy-gurdy wheel for the uh, bridge support. Um, however, this is a uh, 10 and a half inches in length, and it's uh, broken down to two and a half inches in between. So I'm measuring from the side one quarter of an inch from the very leading edge, and then uh, two and a half inches down the remaining part of the part. Now it's approximately one inch wide. I wouldn't go any wider than two inches. Two inches is probably bordering on the uh, thickness of being too thick. Um, however, uh, for this part, it's a support port and it's designed so that it holds the rulers or any other sound making parts that you'd like to bolt onto the very front of the apprehension engine. Now make sure that you drill wider than the screw that you're using. You don't want the actual screw to catch on the side. It needs to flow freely, allow you to adjust it. And the measurement there is one quarter of an inch away from the leading edge. So it's not dead center. Now these are the screws I'm using. They're the same I use for the body. You can use whatever screws that you like, but these are the ones I'm using. Make sure they are a little longer, obviously, because if you put something wider than a ruler in there, you want to have a little bit of give or a little bit of extra room to move. So I'm just measuring it up now. As you can see, I've taken out all the screws that I need to in the front. And you can see it's also in line with the large guitar neck. Now what I am doing obviously is where the holes are, I've used a pen and just to be able to mark it. And then I'm going through with a drill, which is thinner than the screw that I'm using and drilling through. Now, this is something I've covered in previous tutorials, so you should know what I'm talking about. So as you can see, the screw floats in there. And as you can see, when I screw it in, I can actually move that bracket up and down on those screws if I need to. And that allows me obviously to lift it up and put different thicknesses. For example, if I have a ruler, I can put a ruler in there. However, I can also put a wooden daxophone in there. Now that's a wooden tongue. And it's also something that Mark Corvin is currently using in his apprehension engine. So I'm just putting all five screws in there, making sure that they're two and a half inches is between. And that way it gives us a little bit of room to obviously put our rulers in there as well as to put anything else in there. And then it's just a matter of screwing them down. Now I've also installed uh, two smaller rulers. They're six inches in length. There's a little bit of wobble there. So I need to make sure that I tighten them down fully. And as you can see, uh, when you actually uh, pluck them, they vibrate, and that's exactly what we're after. Now, one thing we need to be mindful of though is because we're gonna be using a bow on them, on the leading edge, on all of our rulers, we need to use some wet and dry sandpaper. So that's fine sandpaper. We need to sand off those edges so it's not too sharp for our bow that we'll be using to make the sounds from them. Now, I'm also going to make a support bracket, and this is it here. I've already pre-made it. And uh, you can make this, you don't have to. Obviously, the same rules apply as with the uh, holder for the rulers. I'm gonna make sure that my holes are larger than the screw that I'm using. I'm gonna make sure that my screw is long so that I can put sound makers underneath it. Now, I'm going to be putting this on the top soundboard. Now, the holes are in line with my screws, so you'll need to measure yours if you're putting one in. And obviously, remove the screws, and then it's just a matter of putting those new screws in, the longer ones, and holding that bracket down. Now, my bracket itself, as you can see, it is the same length as the width of my soundboard from side to side, so nothing overhangs. And it doesn't matter how wide it is, this one is around about an inch in width. 
Now these items are what I'm gonna be using. Now these are going to be used to make tapping sounds continuously. And it's a long metal rod and it's got a metal weight on the end of it. So you can hold it down on a desk, for example, and lift it up and it will keep on vibrating and making a tapping sound. Now I never created these. I got these from a hardware store. This is the brand here. Let me show you. It's made by Whites and it's a Regency steak. It's actually used for a garden, but it's a metal rod and it's got a weight on it. So if you don't have anything like this in your hardware, just buy a metal rod and you can put your own counterweight on it to allow it to tap ongoing. So I'm gonna show you how I'm going to install it. Obviously it just goes under our support up the top. This obviously allows us to put our noise makers up there. The other option is if you can't make one of these rods, why not try and buy one of those long metal rulers, like one of those ones that are, I think they sell them at 90 centimeters or one meter in length and tie one of them on there. And as you can see, the weight makes it continuously tap and allows me to make some nice ambient sounds from it. So there's two lengths for this one. Uh, there's this long one, which I'm currently using, and we've also got a shorter one. So the long one is a little bit over one meter. I'm probably gonna trim it down. It's a little bit too long. It hangs over the other side of the box. But this one here does shorter taps. So it taps quicker. Obviously the shorter the rod, the quicker it will tap. And the longer the rod is, the slower it will tap. Now let's move straight into adding our strings. So this is our three string adjustable bridge. And uh, what it does obviously is it's got holes at the back of it where we feed the string through and it comes through into the center and then over the tops where the Allen keys go with the screws. And uh, I'll show you how you install them. So obviously I'm going to use my violin string first of all, and it is the thin of of the group. However, this is your apprehension engine. So obviously you can choose whatever thickness you need. You just simply un tangle the actual wire itself and at the very end you'll see there's a little lug and that prevents it from being pulled through the bridge and it's just a matter of finding the other end and feeding it straight through that hole and then through the other hole where the adjustable bridge is and then pulling that straight through and that obviously goes straight through to our tuners so I'm gonna show you how I install my tuner. Obviously the Y goes straight through the eyelet. Do a little bit of a loop. Make sure it's a little bit slack. So one loop around. And then I'm gonna start tightening these clockwise. And once I've done that, I'm not tuning it at the moment. I just want it to be firm. And I'm having a look at where our humbucker is. And there's a little bit of give there, probably needs to come down a little bit and I'll show you how you do that with our adjustable bridge shortly. I'm gonna speed up the video now. You don't need to see me threading the next two strings through, however. Now, when you're choosing the strings that you're gonna use for the three string guitar neck, what you can do is obviously you've got your violin strings, so you can use the smaller of the four strings that are in there, um, or you can use the smaller of the three strings out of your electric guitar. Depends on what type of sound you're going for. The strings aren't too much different looking at them. Um, I'm assuming the violin strings are gonna sound a little bit more higher pitched. But otherwise, it's just a matter of what it is you're going for. So depending on what sound you want to hear, so if you want to sound something close to a violin or if you want to go more of an electric guitar, it's your apprehension engine and obviously you'll be after whatever sound that you want. So I'm just going to do a quick check uh, showing you how high my strings are sitting at the moment off our pickup. And I'm going to show you now how to make the adjustments bridge. So as you can see, there is some hex screws there and it comes with a little hex tool, which allows us to go in there. I'm anti-clockwise turning that screw and it makes the bridge drop down lower. And that's how you get the strings closer to that pickup. So once you've done that, obviously um, you go through all of your strings and make sure that your strings are sitting correctly. So I want them to sit not too high above my pickup. And as you can see, when I speed this up, it shows you that it does drop down. So it is actually quite a cool tool to put on there. 
So let's go straight through now the cello strings. So the cello strings come in a first, a second, a third, and a fourth string. So the third and the fourth strings are the two strings that I'm interested in. If you want to get a higher pitch, use the one and two string. However, the third and fourth string are the nice drone sounding strings. So I'm using the third first and I'm threading that through my hurdy-gurdy wheel bridge that I created and it's just going to sit over the hurdy-gurdy wheel and now I'm going to take out my fourth string and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to feed that through the hole that I created on the other side. And the same as before, I'm going to feed through my wire, my first one for the third. Now the secret with this, you'll see there's a bit of material on the end. Make sure the material is actually what is being gripped onto, not the wire. There you go. And I'm doing one side clockwise, which is my third wire. And on the other side, which is my fourth wire, I'm going to turn my tuner anti-clockwise. And what that does is going to allow the strings to be on the outside of my tuner. And then it's just a matter of tucking it in just to make it look nice and clean. And I'll do that, obviously, with both those strings. Now, cello strings are really nice. They do have a nice drone sound to them, and that's why I'm using the third and the fourth string. But again, like if you want to get a higher sounding string, then try the first and second. And here we have it. Now we need to put our cello adjustable bridge in there, and I'm going to show you that, and we're going to do that now. So first of all, when I put it under there, you notice that it's too small. It's not actually fitting. So what we need to do is actually lift it up. So I've got a little piece of plywood that I've already sanded down to size. Another option is you could use a paddle pop stick, a clean one, obviously, um, to get a little bit more height and use that as an adjustment. And what you want to do is make sure that that bridge is just making it so the strings are just touching the hurdy-gurdy wheel. And you obviously do that by uh, cranking the wheel and uh, one thing about where the bridge is I'm not gluing this in place I want to be able to move it however don't forget our pickup is underneath it and that's where the sound will vibrate through so I'm going to glue this now I'm going to use super glue I've already sanded the two corners down a little bit so that it gives me more area to glue that part to the bottom that I'm currently adding to that bridge so that is something that you can do obviously it can be fiddly, so take your time when you're making an adjustment to this. If you take too much material off it, you can always glue something else underneath it to make it lift up higher. So I've used super glue. I've used a clamp to hold it. After five minutes, it's set nicely. And I'm obviously going to put that adjustment block on top again on our bridge. Now here's a close-up. I'm going to get closer. I'm going to, uh, obviously on the adjustable bridge, there's those two screws. Allows us to bring the bridge right down, and that's what we want to do. So make sure it's as low as possible, because that way you can obviously use it to lift the wires up. I'm just going to put that bridge under at the moment, so I can have a look at it. Now, it is a adjustable cello bridge. So it comes with eight strings for the holder. However, we're going to uh, make a little bit of a cut in the top of them using a file in order to our strings to sit down a little bit lower on that bridge. So here is a close-up of those marks I was talking about. So a cello takes eight strings. So there's eight uh, indentations there for the strings themselves. So I'm going to use the two string holders on the inside as my mark. And here it is here after I've used a file to sand them down. And I used a square file in order to make these a little bit deeper to hold on to the cello strings. I'll show you that file in a second. Here it is here. So it's square, but I use the edge. So don't make it flat. Use the corner like I'm showing you now in order to make a wedge in there. And then it's just a matter of, again, lifting those strings up. So a lot of this is uh, trial and error and keep on adjusting it to make your adjustments. As you can see, the strings are still touching it with the adjustment down, which is what we want because then we can make the adjustment to lift the bridge like I'm showing you now, and that way the wire will go up as you're tuning it. Next thing I'm going to show you is we need to put some cotton on the strings. I'm going to show you a video at the end of this video 
so you can watch a professional do it. I'm going to uh, put it on quickly, but I'm not going to spend too much time showing you how to do this because there is a video out there of somebody who has a hurdy-gurdy wheel that actually shows you how to put the cotton on properly. And you will need to use rosin on the strings and rosin's what you put on a bow for a violin. So you need to make sure that you get some of that. Um, it is in the list uh, of the uh, list of bits and pieces that you need for building this apprehension engine. I did cover that. Um, so it's a matter of putting that on the string and then obviously uh, wrapping your cotton around the string itself. I've put a little bit too much on uh, for this build. However, I'm going to take it off and, and redo it again. So I'm not very happy with it. Next thing we need to do is get some rosin and we need to put that on our hurdy-gurdy wheel. So I'm going to actually put our rosin on, on it and I'm going to turn the wheel or crank it like I'm doing right now. So there's the rosin and I'm holding it. And what it does is it makes the wheel a little bit sticky so that way it starts to pick up on the cotton and vibrate our strings as we crank it and gives us that nice droning sound. Now I haven't glued the adjustable bridge down because I wanted to make it so I can actually move it around while I'm playing it. However, at a later date, I may actually glue it to my soundboard. It's something I don't want to do at the moment because I think there's more opportunity to get more sounds out of it. And here is our finished apprehension engine. So we've got our noisemakers up the top. We've got all our strings in there, ruler, all our pickups are on there. It's just ready to plug right in and start playing it. So I just want to take the time now to thank everyone that has followed the building process of building the apprehension engine. I'm happy to say that I am the first YouTuber on YouTube to actually create this as well as show you how to build one. Obviously, Mark Corvin is the original musician that came up with the idea working with Tony Duggan Smith. Obviously, Tony Duggan Smith builds these professionally. So if you are in the ballpark to actually buy one, make sure that you do. If not, if you're somebody like myself who likes to enjoy making these, or if, for example, you do short films or want to make your own horror film, then obviously this is great for you because you can create an instrument that can make some horror sounds. Now, I'm going to have a break from doing the apprehension engine. However, there is going to be a series of how to play the apprehension engine. So watch out for those tutorials. They will be coming soon. However, in the next couple of weeks, there will be videos still coming out on the channel, obviously, um, but these won't be related to the apprehension engine build itself. So if you want to become a film master sub, it is pretty simple. You can subscribe to my channel. You can like me on Facebook and on Twitter. And until next time, don't just film it, apprehension engine it.